Hey, greetings, everybody, and uh, welcome to another edition of Jamie's Journeys. And uh, right now, uh, we are with, of course, our captain of our Seven Seas Voyager, Captain Doc. And we are in, well, we're about a two and a half hour drive from Sharm el Sheikh, Egypt, to visiting uh, St. Catherine's Monastery. And, uh, Captain, uh, I see you got uh, some French wine here. Yes, I thought that uh, Monseigneur would like uh, a French wine instead of a Californian. Ah. So we're going to meet uh, the monks here at St. Catharines and they give them a special thank you for opening up the monastery for us to visit today. So actually, uh, we're going to visit the bishop, the man who uh, is in charge of St. Catharines. Thank you very much. From here, from, from? I am from Norway. Oh, Norway? Oh, yes. I agree. I agree. But I represent the cruise ship, and I'm very grateful that you open up specially for us today. At all special for yeah. you. You know how it's very important. Today is the biggest Friday for us. As for you, yeah. is the big Friday. Easter is together, they said. We are very, very uh, honored you know. that you wanted to receive us, and I brought you some uh, some wine, which I hope you will uh, enjoy. Much. And we also you brought... Being with uh, injured health. Uh, Mr. Uh, who are you? I am uh, the ship's cruise director. Ah, ship's director. Uh, I, I serve under the captain. Yeah, well, welcome. It's very yeah, nice. Captain. Yes, I'm a captain. Oh, yes, I'm very, very happy. <laughs> but it's very <laughs> nice to uh, to come and visit you. So I, uh, on behalf of uh, all the nice people that we are bringing, to to nice also to I uh, appreciate it very much. This right. is just a little souvenir. Thank you very, very much. A good souvenir from you. <laughs> it's from the very ship, as a matter of fact. Ah, from ship. Yes. Which uh, company of ship? It's called Regent Seven Seas Cruise Line. Uh -huh. How many years you have stayed in the monastery? Not uh, so many years. A half a century. <laughs> half a century. Thirty, forty-six years from six to one. You've been here. Yes. yes. From six to one. I'm yeah. very impressed. Mm -hmm. hmm. It's a very beautiful place. Excellent place, and we like very much. We're reborn here. Me, I'm reborn. Yeah. I'm born in Athens and reborn here. Oh. Reborn here, yes. We came with the passengers first time, 1992, and we have been here every year. But this year we were told that it was closed, and I was so sorry. So thanks to the company and all of your friendliness, you opened it up for us, and I'm forever grateful for that in this very holy day of the year. Yes, you know, it's so, so it's not only it's so full and, and from, from prayers, but this was for fathers a necessary at all to be in, in rest this uh, so important day. And we made this exception for you for half hour while we open the monastery, one hour most and not more. But the other, I hope uh, the other Fridays will be not so important, it will not be f uh, closed. You know that uh, normally all the, all the Fridays uh, will close and open a little, only one hour. All, but especially today is at all closed. I'm very grateful and I, uh, I would like to ask you one thing. I would like to ask yes, what? if you can uh, give us a blessing for the reminder of the voyage. A reminder of what we, we are sailing from here and yes. onwards ah. to America. Ah, yeah. Bless you, many blessings, but how often? <laughs> no, but. Uh, <laughs> okay, I will give. If, if you mean a blessing for you, special, of course, and you and uh, all the people here with you, and a blessing to your also ship to be always in good uh, study. I don't let you any problem in your travel through it. He's dust in through the oceans. Thank you very much. 
So we're very uh, honored to be here. Is this your private residence, Bishop? Exactly, it's private residence for me. It's mm -hmm. a small office, own office, my bedroom. Mm -hmm. It's a, it's a secret, a secret uh, yard there. Mm -hmm. And there's more supper here. Yeah. And how many monks reside here now? Into the monastery, there are 23 monks uh, into the monastery. And all the fraternities mm -hmm. out of the monasteries, there are 35 people. Mm -hmm. And there's also some unknown, uh, some sisters, about 10 sisters in two separate uh, because two historic places, two group of uh, nuns. Mm -hmm. Small group of uh, ten together sisters. Mm -hmm. so one is, in, is not here, of course. One is uh, 25 kilometers from here, the other uh, 60, 16 kilometers, mm -hmm. 60 kilometers from here. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and and the, uh, one is in Tafa, the other in Feram Wadi. Mm -hmm. Yes, others. And I would think that uh, this is a very privileged place to be able to serve. Uh, Previous place we hope for us is of course because the desert is a, an historic and a holy desert because of the events they they take place here mm -hmm. from the time of, of Moses and uh, after that and time of the Christian events I mean most of the monks come here and live in alone and far from the cities living here for God in prayer and praying all, not for themselves, also for all the, all the world. And that is very important. The monasticism, you know, is a important, a, a, a very important uh, event into the Orthodox Church. Mm -hmm. Maybe in your church, in Protestant church, you have not uh, monasticism. No, we don't. We have not, uh, I think. The Catholic Church says the Orthodox also. And uh, in Orthodox Church, the monasticism is uh, most is uh, sihastic, but there's also uh, many other duty, especially the Philoxenia and uh, uh, here we are in the desert. We try to help uh, the Aram people, Bedouins, and also to to accept, to receive all the people that are coming from all the world. Of course, into the frame of our possibility. We open on the morning from about 9 to 12, and uh, we close the other day, mm -hmm. except some exception we make for mm -hmm. VIP. Mm -hmm. And we close also, as you know, Friday and Sunday. And some very big uh, feast uh, concerning the, the our feast. Uh, they are uh, coming from the Pascha, which moving them on the same day. You know, Pascha, Easter, in all the in your church, in our church, is not the same day exactly. <coughs> it's changed according to the position of the moon. Mm -hmm. For, uh, for this reason, we have different. This uh, year, uh, Easter is together for all the Christians, Orthodox, Catholic, Protestants, the same day. So right over here, this is actually the site where it was believed that this is where Moses met his wife, the, actually Jethro, who had the seven daughters. So he met one of the daughters of uh, Jethro right over here while they were watering their flocks and he helped them to do that. So we find that afterwards he got married to her as all of us know the story and he stayed over here in this solitude and for 40 years in order to start actually, uh, as we say, contemplating and thinking of God. And uh, as all of us know the story before that, that when Moses, he uh, had, his, as we say, the heart of a Hebrew man, and he had to kill one of the Egyptian men, and that's how he had to leave the country. 
And that was Muhammad. That's uh, Moses. No, but after that's Muhammad, when after he was left. Exactly. And that's why. <laughs> yes. yes. And that's why he came and he lived in solitude over here. And that's when he actually met one of the daughters of Jesu right over here. It is still functioning. It's still working till nowadays. We still do have water, but because lots of people and tourists used to come and just use the water over here, so that's why you will find that they just closed it. But it's still functioning. It's still water. It does have water. So this is the well. The well of Moses. important parts of the monastery as well which you can see uh, right over here it's that's what you can see in front of us mm -hmm. it is showing the place where when God uh, actually revealed himself to Moses and told him you are in the holy actually Torah and take off your shoes and then afterwards this is where it was believed that the uh, trees they were consumed actually they were never consumed but they were on fire just like as they believe like Virgin Mary when she had uh, Jesus without being and she kept always being as she is virgin so this is one of the most important of the name the scientific name of the tree it is uh, rubus sanctus now they've tried to grow these trees in other parts of the world you Ex say yes and it never they did never succeed to do that no it never it was never successful it can only, only, grow only grow here only over here yes they've tried to do that but they never succeeded to do that at all are going inside now the, uh, the actually museum where they have the beautiful mosaic dome. Unfortunately, we cannot say anything, but I think you are you are you can't film. This is the way it looks like inside the mosaic dome. The church from inside. Unfortunately, we cannot fit. Here's the back, so it's of course very, very beautifully done. This is the well, which I showed it to you, and this is the photo just showing you, imagining what we were talking about. The well is here, yes. and this was the imagination of the well. especially for us, and we cannot say anything, but I believe Marcel can be able to film a little. <laughs> I'm from Norway, I was wondering, I what, what is the oldest book you have in here? From the fourth century. From the fourth? We have several from the fourth century. St. Catherine's is the oldest monastery in Christendom, with a history going back to the late third, early fourth century. The first Christians came here at the time of the Roman persecution of the Christians. They fled into the desert, exactly the same way Moses had fled into the desert to escape Pharaoh, but they also wanted to identify the place where God had revealed himself to Moses. When God revealed himself, he said, the ground where thou standest is holy ground. So the early Christians wanted to identify that very place, and that formed the center for the Christian presence here. And then that coincided with the dawn of the monastic movement when monks deliberately went out into the desert to devote their lives to prayer and fasting. So there have been monks here from the very dawn of the monastic movement. 
And the remarkable thing about Sinai is that it has never been abandoned and never been destroyed in all of its 17 centuries of history. So it's 17 centuries of continuity here. The present basilica and the high surrounding walls were built at the command of the Emperor Justinian, who built them for three reasons, to honor this holy place, to protect the monks who lived here, and also to serve as a fortress, because this was at that time the perimeter of the Byzantine Empire. The Moslems came in the seventh century, so it could not have been built after that. And the remarkable thing is that it has been honored by every people who has come to Sinai, so it has remained intact. The result is that you have fortress walls dating back to the 6th century, and inside uh, you have this confusing array of structures built at many different levels in many different time periods. The important books here are the ones above all around the room because that is the monastery's manuscript collection. Altogether we have 3,300 manuscripts, the oldest date from the 4th century, this is a very important resource for scholars, but it's very difficult for scholars to come here because of the distance, because of the climate. So the Archbishop has initiated an important program where we have a high resolution digital camera and then we photograph the manuscripts. We see that first of all as protecting the manuscripts because the scholar is looking at a quality image and not handling the original, but it also allows us to share the documents much more easily. We can send a DVD to a scholar anywhere in the world and then he can study the manuscript and the convenience of his own office. And then if there's some detail about the binding or something that he hasn't seen, that he can come here and look at it as a conclusion of a study as opposed to making it his whole study here. So this is a juxtaposition of the fourth century monastery, the sixth century church, and the very latest technology, <laughs> but seen as supporting the ancient goals of the monastery. Father Justin, uh, who uh, did a, just a great explanation of the library, and uh, Father, uh, where are you from? Well, I've been a monk here at St. Catherine's for 11 years, but I grew up in El Paso. Mm -hmm. I was actually born in Fort Worth, and then when I was two, we moved to Chile. And I lived in Chile from the time I was two until I was nine, and then we moved back to El Paso. I went to school in Austin. I lived in Boston for 22 years, mm -hmm. and then I came here, and I've been here 11 years. 11 years, and how, how did you go about getting being privileged to have this assignment? Well, it was many small steps. I, I uh, grew up Protestant, and I knew all about the apostles and all about the Reformation and nothing about what happened in between. Mm -hmm. And I started reading uh, first medieval history, and later Byzantine history, and that uh, seemed like um, uh, I discovered a treasure. Yeah. <laughs> and then the more I read about Byzantine history, the more I concentrated on the church. And then only after I had read many books about the Orthodox Church did I, in the, in the history, did I begin to attend Orthodox services. Mm. And then I became Orthodox when I was a student at the university, and it became the most important thing to me, so I wanted to do something associated with the church. Great. And I ask, uh, how many other Americans or Canadians are also residing here? Well, there's a rule here that you must be of Greek descent to become a member of the community. Mm -hmm. And it's by exception to that rule that I'm here, and there's one monk from England, from Crediton and Devon, and he's been here about 15 years, and I've been here about 11 years. And we're the only two non-Greeks who are yeah. members of the community. And do you have in your mind how long you'd like to stay? Or well, this is my home now. <laughs> so you'll and, and because I speak English, I'm constantly asked to go to conferences, and uh, that forces me to leave the monastery. But I'm always, it's always like a triumph when you get back here. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, this, is, this is where I, I feel the greatest joy. It's a privilege mm -hmm. to live in such a place, yeah. but we also feel the um, obligation to share the heritage that's here with everyone. We do a great job, and you have a phenomenal home. Thank you for uh, speaking about it. Thank you. Thank you. If you see down there where the camels are and the little dirt road up there, that's the camel tribe up to the Mount Sinai. 
where of course Moses climbed up to receive his Ten Commandments. Where we are going now with the camels, so that's why we don't really have much time. Yeah, we have time for maybe one commandment. Yeah, yeah that's true. <laughs> and uh, maybe we should have a little bird's eye view of the monastery as well. Yeah, you know, the, the mountains here are just phenomenal, the jagged peaks. Uh, I guess the Sinai the word refers to the teeth. Uh, which refers to the shape of the mountain, the jaggedness. And the eruption was there, you know, so we have the uh, Bay of Aqaba. Mm -hmm. And of course the Suez comes down like like a front teeth. Mm -hmm. Which is still there. That is the Mount Sinai, the last one of the peaks. 7,500 feet high. 7,500 feet, the one in the background. Unfortunately, we don't have time. Well, we're now uh, reclining after our journey uh, back in Sharm El Sheikh and uh, with Hannah, our tour guide. And Hannah, first off, that library that we went into, it, I'm yeah. understanding that's probably one of the two most important uh, that's right libraries, Christian libraries in the world, with the first maybe in the Vatican. Uh, but, uh, and that was quite uh, an opportunity to meet the bishop to today. Is that uh, rare? We were very lucky, actually, to, do, yeah. to meet the bishop. And he gave all the explanation in details about the library. And this is something very special, mm -hmm. which was done, of course, for our group as well. Yes, yeah. yes, it's one of the treats. <laughs> Can you tell us about uh, this area and religion and how it all works? Yes, you're talking about the monastery or uh, yeah. Sharm? Yes, well, actually, the monastery itself, talking about the Christianity, generally speaking, when did it start in Egypt? We're talking about 61 AD, when St. Mark started preaching Christianity. And at that time, he took Alexandria to be the center. Alexandria was already the center of the Greeks. Mm. So they thought if they can spread it in the center of the Greeks, it would be so easy to spread it all over Egypt. So the early center, for the early Coptics was always in the north in Alexandria. And that's why we had, till very recently, the bishop of Alexandria that was mainly existing in Alexandria. Now it's in Cairo, but till very recently we had it in Alexandria. Uh, it remained like that where we find, find that the early Coptics were very badly treated, you know, by uh, the early, uh, by the, uh, of course, the Romans. They were persecuted, and the persecution had reached its apex we would say 284 AD. This is at the time of Diocletian, when uh, they called it the Day of the Martyrs, and when he started killing most of the saints, as well as they took out of this date the 
early Coptics here, this is a very important date because they took out of that date as to be the beginning of their calendar. We're talking about 284 AD. About 100 years afterwards, Christianity was declared as to be the official religion of the country. Thank you. And uh, 451 AD, that's when both churches, the Eastern churches broke away with the Western churches due to the different opinions about the nature of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Muslims came 640 AD, they said everybody can practice his own religion. And since then to nowadays we're living in such harmony all together. Mm -hmm. So this is just the outline of the uh, Coptic history. When we say Coptic, by the way, it's derived from the hieroglyphic or the very early name of Egypt, Egypt. When the Greeks came, they used to call Egypt Egypt. So the Christians, they were what the Arabs called them, Egyptus, mm -hmm. means Christian Egyptians. Whether we say Coptics or Christians, it's the same thing. Precisely, it means Christian Egyptians. Yeah. So this is just an outline of the, the whole Coptic history here in Egypt. Well, very good, very interesting. Okay. And what, what history? around here and uh, that, that looks very tasty by the way. Uh, uh -huh. That is uh, fresh cantaloupe. You know we're very famous here in Egypt for wonderful all types of fruits especially the fresh fruits so we have wonderful orange mangoes come back in August we have the best mangoes and cantaloupes and strawberries oh everything actually we really are very famous we have wonderful uh, variety of fruits yes yes. So I have to say that uh, I love the visit to St. Catharines, uh, but I, I must say that I really, I almost enjoyed the ride out and back, although <laughs> uh, yes. it was long, uh, as much as the visit there. How many kilometers do we go each way from Sharm el Sheikh? Uh, from Sharm el Sheikh, actually, to St. Catherine, we're talking uh, a little bit more than like 270 to 80 mm -hmm. kilometers. So we're talking about the takes two hours and a half, three hours. It's very nice opportunity that you see more of the desert, you see more of the mountains, and you see really uh, more of a uh, totally different part of Egypt, especially that Sinai is considered to be the bridge between Asia and Africa. Mm -hmm. So it always had its own importance, even as early as the time of the ancient Egyptians. It was the pilgrimage road as well for the uh, Muslims. Uh, so it really had always its uh, special importance. Is the topography that we saw indicative to most of the uh, Sinai Peninsula? Yes, mm -hmm. yes, you find that, mm -hmm. and uh, yes. And then as you continue to go west, I think you say you reach the Sahara? Is that right? Yes, will be more the, what we call the Sahara Desert or the Western Desert. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is where we have most of the oasis. And we still have, by the way, the earliest monasteries as well existing all over the world. Among the earliest ones still existing and still functioning, it's in the Western Desert as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. do, they, do they get uh, many uh, tourists? tourists? Uh, we do have. Usually the ones who will be going to Alexandria on the way back, mm -hmm. from Alexandria back to Cairo, lots of people would uh, stop at these monasteries. Mm -hmm. We do have some itineraries and some programs. We stop and we do uh, see some of those wonderful, really, monasteries in the desert, yes, yes. Well, now we're back in Sharm El Sheikh, and uh, I haven't been here a number of years, but I am absolutely amazed. It's totally different, it's and grown. it's My it, yeah, it's growing tremendously, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, and yeah. it's actually one of considered to be now one of the best five uh, resorts mm -hmm. existing all over the world. Mm -hmm. And the name Sharm is very important to describing. Yes, the, where the, it is really. Yes, and the uh, site itself or the map itself, it's like a split. Mm -hmm. Sharm in Arabic or Egypt means split. Mm -hmm. So it is because of, if you look at the map, you're going to find exactly what we're talking about. This is the shisha. This is pure tobacco, nothing else. Okay. <laughs> and it's right. supposed right. to be very good for the chest. It's My not very strong well. as oh. cigarettes. Okay. Hubbly bubbly. Well, it's not uh, good, but it's, they say, it's, it's not considered good. <laughs> to be better than cigarettes, actually. It's, it's a flavor, yes, of apple or sometimes strawberry. <laughs> what is it? Inhale. Don't do Inhale. Speech. I don't know about that. <laughs> I feel like I'm at the dentist's office, you know, that little slurpy that clears the water out of your mouth. Don't inhale. some. Actually, it's not bad. This is an apple, they tell me. It's yeah. a flavor of uh, sometimes lemon. You choose the flavor you like. Yeah. Uh -huh.
sometimes they put some ice to cool it as well. Can you imagine? No, so. It's the same as a hookah. No, 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 it's yeah. Okay. It's, it's, it's a hookah. hookah. Yeah. It's a hookah. It is. Yeah. Okay. So there's many different names to it. Yeah, we call it shisha. Shisha or yeah, or habli babli sometimes. Yeah. Yes, the same thing. That's your first time to try that? Actually, no. Uh, I've done it in Turkey before, in Istanbul. Oh, okay. And in, there you have a big tea tea houses, ah, and yes. you see many of the young people, you know, puffing away is uh, yes. uh, become a big pastime there. I guess it went out yes, of favor, like and I was back in. Yes, before. that's very nice. Anyway, well, it was a, just a delightful journey today. Excellent. And really uh, very grateful to be out there and spending that time with Thank you. Thank you very much. It was uh, my honor loved, our pleasure. Cam loved our camel ride. <laughs> up, uh, I think it's going to be once, uh, once in a lifetime. Yeah. Huh? <laughs> yeah, the, the whole day was fantastic. So uh, thank you very much uh, you for very taking much. care of us today. And we'd like to have you again and again, and back to St. Catherine again. Yeah. Thank you very much. And uh, we look forward to uh, having you on our ship tonight. You're going to sail with us. To yes. To Suez I'm tomorrow. really so excited. I'm going to do that. I like yeah. that very much. Yes, yeah. I've done it before, and I really would love that. Well, thank we look forward much. to taking care of you and making you feel at home on thank board you. our ship. Thank you very us. much. Anna, thank you for a great day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Say, ah. Oh. <laughs> Can you sit there? Yeah, we're going to have to pull it. I'm afraid we're going to have to pull that one or drill it. It's like being at the dentist. <laughs> hey, Doug, uh, this is a great, a great day. <laughs> My God, I have to sit in the smoking section. <laughs> no, no, no. Sorry. It was a great day. Yes, I and have to uh, say that. Uh, thanks for getting it done. You're, you're the guy that... Uh, made it happen today and uh, I have to say that uh, there, no no too. this was my plan uh, a month ago so I started working on this on a month ago of course very much helped by uh, Phil the travel manager but what yeah. Phil didn't know that we had uh, we had an official arrival here at uh, one o'clock in the afternoon so uh, I thought that was stupid mm -hmm. if he could uh, because uh, for um, hopefully for all of those who went to St. Catherine St. Catherine's Monastery is uh, so special that uh, I thought it would be a shame to come to Sharm el Sheikh mm -hmm. and, and not doing it. So uh, <laughs> we started working with the agency and uh, like, like a month ago, and mm -hmm. it has been back and forth, back and forth. And I said that I can be there at seven o'clock in the morning, which we were. And of course, uh, we managed to get them to open up, mm -hmm. which was uh, even more fantastic because it's uh, Good, Friday, Good today. Friday today. So it's uh, no, under no circumstances. Mm -hmm. So um, luckily, as the bus broke down and they, the wine was in the bus that broke down, I, <laughs> I, ne I always think that some you, you always need Plan B. So I took six bottles with me to be in, in my car. French, French, French. Uh, <laughs> But I, I thought that was very, very special, and, uh, and uh, the history of this monastery is something that uh, cannot be forgotten, and I hope that uh, for those who enjoy uh, the voyage today, I think it can give you an idea of how it is about, and uh, I don't know if you are here next year or not, I, I, I don't really remember. I know we go to Petra, but uh, if you are coming here, I would really advise all of you that didn't come to, to have a look at it, because it's such a beautiful place. Mm -hmm. And it has so much history, and it's ob obviously a place that uh, you don't really come back to so easily and so often. Mm -hmm. Well, it was a delightful day, and the, the fact that you got us in to meet the bishop, go into his personal quarters. That was a luck. Yeah, to, and deliver the wine. And, and, the plate, and, the, plate. and the plate from yeah. the Seven Seas Voice. You yeah. never know, you know, when the Pope comes visiting, maybe he goes for a cruise. <laughs> yeah. We'll come back 10 years from now, we'll see the plate on the wall. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> but it was just a, a fantastic day, yeah? I actually thought of my great-great-grandchildren when they ever come back and say, oh, my father was here, you know? <laughs> <laughs> well, I know uh, you spent a lot of time uh, working to get it done, and uh, it was fantastic. And uh, I'm very grateful, Dana and everybody else. Great day, Doc. Thank you. Well, it was nice of you to come, and I yeah. hope that everyone that sees the program uh, enjoys it. And uh, let's say that for those who are with us next year, I don't even know if we're coming. <laughs> I think we I, are. I think we're coming to Sharm el Sheikh, but of course then we can organize it uh, in a different way. Obviously, it's great diving here as well, but it all depends what your pri priorities are, mm -hmm. of course. I've been coming here since 1990, and uh, I've seen how this place have... Uh, 
grown and grown and grown, so I thought it was fun for you guys to see it as well. But yeah. uh, obviously, St. Catherine has remained exactly as it was. Mm -hmm. And I also enjoyed the riding up the mountains on that camel. Yeah. So in my next life, I think I will be a Bedouin. <laughs> sort of a nice movement. Yeah. You you led the way there. You <laughs> did, as you always do. <laughs> well, Doug, thank you. And to all our guests, thanks for tuning in to Jamie's Journeys on the Voyager today. And what a great day it was. What a great day. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>